questions. And um, this microphone doesn't really go everywhere. The microphone doesn't really go everywhere. And if you didn't hear me very well, my voice normally projects. So if you have a question, please stand up. I can try to get this to you. Um, ask your question with this or however you like. Bob? Uh, by the way, I, I brought just a couple of our legislative agendas. If anyone's uh, interested, um, they're here. If you want to see what the chamber is working on uh, legislatively at the congressional and the assembly level, uh, Chris is actually chair, uh, in fact, uh, staffs our governmental affairs committee. So if you have any questions about those, uh, Chris is here and he'll be happy to answer those for you. Uh, you know, every now and then the chamber gets characterized as right wing, and I'll, I'll, I'll take a phrase from Elaine uh, that. Uh, uh, I think you're the only, the first person I heard say this is, we see ourselves as raging moderates, uh, not right wing or left wing, we take it right down the middle. Actually in the chamber world, we talk about the same center. We try to, to, to stay right in the same center, which means uh, we wear the target on our back. So we get criticized from both sides. You know, some of my business members say, Bob, you're, you're, you're a raving lunatic liberal. And I have others that tell me I'm far right wing. As long as, you, as long as they're both uh, criticizing you, I'm good. Yeah, yeah, right, good. Right. And, and Raging and, moderate. Yeah, that, that's good with like our nonpartisanship. Elaine uh, Hopkins, so <laughs> credit that to her. People, yeah. people will criticize you for being in the middle, right? Yeah. Yeah. Are there any questions? Well, I, I mean, Bob, I'd like to come to the first marijuana bud drop. You know what's funny? You know what's funny about that? Uh, 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 What's funny about that is the, uh, the marijuana growing plant that happens to be in Shemokin Dam Borough, of which Joe McGranahan is the mayor. <laughs> Let's invite Joe to the, uh, yeah. the, the you know, as I, I say to Joe, if, again, if you listen to On the Bar, yeah. I, I say to Joe, Joe, you play a conservative, but you're no conservative. You know, uh, sort of like the guy, I play a doctor, but I'm not a doctor. The, uh, but let's just see if we can get him out to a marijuana bud tree. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess it's Jenner. Oh, here's one. Uh, I just, I don't it think won't go that far. So I please stand up. Uh, is your mission and vision statement, are they uh, on the website? Do you, you do have a website, I'm sure. We do, yes. Yes, yep. yes uh, they are on the website. Um, I don't know that I can recite it from heart, and oh, I probably I should I be able to. That. I just um, but yes, that. they are on the website, and uh, actually, at uh, all of our committees, they're at the top of every agenda. We do try to keep, especially our volunteers, connected to that. But we're, we're really all about collaboration, being a convening type of group. Uh, that's our biggest strength is networking, and so uh, we particularly advocate for the prosperity of communities, culture, citizens, and there's a fourth one. Commerce. Commerce. The big one. Um, so uh, that's that's the big, the heart of our mission statement. We added that prosperity of communities in our last strategic plan, where the uh, folks told us very clearly we need to get behind uh, building our communities. And out of that, uh, maybe you've heard of the Community Prosperity Alliance. Well, we coordinate all of the downtown uh, organizations, Main Street uh, organizations in the four county area uh, through that Community Prosperity Alliance. So it's. Prosperity of commerce, culture, citizens, and communities. And, and I assume the inclusiveness uh, that you mentioned is, is part of your mission vision statement. Is that a recent uh, uh, Yeah, that's, uh, we, we added the uh, polarization. Actually, it's really depolarization, if you think about it. But right. we added the polarization initiative based on our last survey. You know, when, when business tells you you have a problem, you need to listen. Uh, and clearly we have a problem. You know, folks can deny that, that you know, a Confederate flag makes somebody feel uncomfortable. Folks can deny that, well, you know, that people aren't mean to each other. We know they are. And, and there's something we're going to do about it. Uh, we're not just going to stand by and say that's okay. You know, after, uh, after we bring folks in, they're our neighbors. You know, we're living in a community and have other people make them feel uncomfortable. That's just not cool. Uh, and not acceptable uh, to the chamber because, you know, uh, really, um, when you when you think about economic development, the very basic ingredient, the basic ingredient is not capital, it's not great highways, it's not water and sewer. The basic commodity is people. You 
need to have people to do the job. And, and if, if we don't uh, make sure that people are comfortable here, they're not gonna come here. They're not gonna stay here. And uh, that's where we, we just have to say, we have to draw the line and say, anything that makes anyone feel uncomfortable is just not acceptable. Okay, thanks, Bob. I'm going to just segue with that to, um, oh, well, do you have a question? Okay. Bob and Chris, thank you very much for coming here today, and uh, we really appreciate partnering with you and the Coffee with the Candidates event, uh, and with your accepting me to uh, leadership. Let's go ahead and Valley. Thank you very much. Um, so, uh, uh, thank, thank you, thank you. Uh, hashtag best class ever. Uh, but, uh, I uh, wanted to, uh, I was really fascinated in your presentation, and wanted to ask about whether you had a sense of other sort of regional uh, chambers of commerce and whether um, you had a sense of whether some of the strategic plan themes that were brought up by your members were also echoed by, by their members. Can, can you repeat, can you the, repeat question? the question, please? You couldn't hear. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Um, so, well, Chris, yeah, Chris, 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 Chris will care for yeah. you. So, uh, uh, Imani's question was, uh, you know, comparatively speaking, uh, looking at other chambers of commerce, especially regional ones, uh, where do we line up? Are our mission statements close? And, um, you know, one of the things that makes us unique, like Bob said, is that, you know, we're not attracting new businesses for industrial parks that we're responsible for. So in that sense, we have a little bit of a, a, a distinction. Uh, so retention um, is a big part of what we do. That really sets us apart. Um, another one that sets us apart is there are a number of chambers of commerce across uh, the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania that are one and the same with the Visitors Bureau. And we are uh, distinct in that we have a fantastic Visitors Bureau that does a great job with tourism in their own right. Um, and we don't need to do that job because they're doing it. Um, it also means that we have the excellent position to be in where we're not accepting uh, government money. Uh, so we don't get money from uh, the local hotel tax. Uh, that gets to go right into marketing the region through the Visitors Bureau. Uh, so to that end, uh, we're really, we're able to remain nonpartisan. That certainly impacts our governmental affairs positions. Uh, and it also uh, means that we can uh, look at best practices from chambers of commerce that are like us. So Imani's question, are there more like us? Uh, we're really pleased to be part of uh, a couple of great groups. Uh, we certainly get advice and information from the Pennsylvania Association uh, of uh, business and industry, um, but we also are part of the uh, Pennsylvania uh, Association of Chamber of Commerce Executives, and I'm actually really excited. I'm gearing up for a conference uh, in October where we're going to hear from uh, chambers of like size and uh, like membership size, especially uh, to deal with those issues. So yes, our missions really do line up. Uh, we are also, however, I'll say incredibly blessed with the infrastructure investment we have with the high quality of the leadership program. Uh, not necessarily me boasting about this here, but so much to say that we have a fantastic board of directors for our leadership program uh, and a legacy of excellent leadership training um, that, that I get to build on, which is really fun to play with. So um, I think I covered a bunch. Bob, you have more to add? Okay, thanks, thanks for that, Chris. Um, so I just wanted to quickly segue into a couple of things that are going on. Uh, it made more sense before the question uh, in the sense that uh, Bob was talking about our future and really of course our future is always children and I wanted to point out the Bach Pro Project is going to be having a uh, groundbreaking or a ribbon cutting I guess is the better term uh, for the new voters exhibit at the Children's Museum and we probably have a date for it but stay tuned so you actually hear the final date that was selected for that. It's going to be really terrific. Um, a lot of people have been working for that on that project for a, a long time. Um, thanks to Voter Services, thanks to membership, thanks to the Forum Committee for the many activities